Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCU Talk, back today with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be going getting back into the Alpha Clash content, talking about uh, the new set that just came out, set one uh, for the game this past week or two. And just really, I'm going to go uh, card by card, uh, color by color, and try to give you the best I can for like a card set review per color, and just kind of give you a good like way to look at cards, and just kind of give you a good uh, general baseline as you go and start this game. So if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, whether you're a Flesh and Blood player or an Alpha Clash player, welcome. Thank you so much for my long standing supporters. Thank you all so much again. I really appreciate it. Feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. But yeah, I wanted to get into it. Uh, I wanted to do color by color set review. And Alpha Clash content, I'm still getting to the feel of like how I want to present it, um, how I want to evaluate cards, and try to give you the best content I can possible. So... I wanted to go color by color, and I'm not saying I am the most professional player out there or, like, I have this crazy understanding of the game. I have played the game a good amount uh, since I first came across it, and I've played enough now to where I feel like I can give people a, a good kind of evaluation on where to start and what cards to look out for for each color because this game is very daunting when it comes to managing board state since you're – Clash cards stay on the board until they're, you know, taken out. It's a little bit different when you're evaluating cards, especially if you're coming from the Flesh and Blood community. It's a lot different. So I wanted to kind of get into it. I I wanted to not quite say, like, you. I didn't want to bring it up as use this card, don't use this card. I want to bring it up as four sections you see here, and I'm going to do this for every single color. Uh, one is auto-include, which means, like, no matter the deck, whatever it is, this card is going to be in your deck. Uh unless you were just doing some crazy, crazy stuff. And, you know, it is it's it is the premier card of, of, the, of the color. Staple is a card that is really good, and you'll see it in a lot of decks, but it's not necessarily an auto-include. And if you don't see it in a deck, it's not like, what are you doing? It's just really, really good. Uh, tech cards are cards, again, like it says, that are really for tech matchups or certain matchups, I think, are better for certain matchups. And then my final one is need support again i'm not going to have a bad card category because the game is way too early to be saying that i think it's just kind of ignorant to do that um and as you can see i know the cards are a little hard to read uh, up close but what i'm gonna do is if you see in the top right of your screen where the card's bigger you'll be able to have a better version of the card um also i'll put a link to the card list down below in the description so we'll get right into it first one is alpha aster giver of all pretty standard this is the poster child or one of the poster childs of the game it's like the chase pull, uh, right, in your boxes. It's an eight-drop irrefutable, um, which uh, is really, really powerful, right? It can't be prevented from entering play. It has observant, which means it can't attack, attack right away, and it has unrivaled, which means you can only have one of it in your deck. It's basically like a, a legendary in flesh and blood. So it has a really powerful ability where it basically clears the board and – it actually works similar to Codex of Frailty, where like you go get your most powerful thing, I can go get my most powerful thing. But it it, it just it's a really cool card. I wouldn't say it's like this amazing card that must be in the deck. I would put it as a staple just because I don't think it's like this like auto include must have, but it's extremely powerful card. The thing with Alpha Aster is though, from what I've seen with my play. Most games go like five to seven turns ish, five to ten turns, five to ten turns really. But if I had to give a more specific route, I'd say like five to seven turns, maybe eight turns. So as you can see, like unless you have a way to mana ramp, uh, which right now there's only like one card in the game that can do that, um, which is one of the Haven cards. You know, you're it's going to be hard to um, be able to do that, right? And be able to hard to get off this, get this off consistently. However, if you do get off, it's really, really good. But regardless, it's like one of the chase pulls in the set. Uh, really, really cool card, and one that's definitely gonna be a staple as just you know a really powerful card. Um, the next one, and I'm gonna go over here, is Moxie Alpha Hunting Specialist. So Moxie Alpha Hunting Specialist, I definitely think it's an interesting card. I'm gonna put it in staple. Okay, I have some gripes with this card. Black is my favorite color, and it's something I've been playing the most. Um, and it's an extremely powerful card, but it has some drawbacks. So it basically says, trigger, enter. Uh, you may reveal the top three cards of your deck. If you do, uh, you may put a Weber or Edwards Clash card with an initial resource cost of um, three or less from among them to your clash zone engage. So it's basically a two for one, right? When you play this, you can go get another card potentially and play that one engage, which is really good. But then you put the rest of your cards into your oblivion. So 
because you put the cards into the oblivion and not the bottom of your deck, it can get a little dicey because you can be throwing away really good cards. I mean, if you don't reveal a Weber and Edwards, you basically just milled three cards. And you put out a two drop three one, which is on rate. The rate in this game is a little bit wonky where like the average rate for a one drop is one one. The average rate for a two drop is pretty much two one or two two. So this has a little bit more offense, but very little defense. Um, so it's basically a searcher. It's a way for you to, to ramp bodies into the field so you can then play for your weapons uh, in your late game with Moxie because Moxie is a very late game hero uh, contender. So this is going to allow you to like ramp that and be able to survive long enough. However, again, if you miss, you miss and they go to the oblivion. They don't go to the to the bottom of the deck which is a little bit annoying. But overall, really good card, really good staple. Definitely one to look out for. Um, your next one uh, we have, and I keep forgetting I have to do this. Okay, next one is Weber's Assistance. Return target weapon from your Oblivion to your hand. This is a tech card. Definitely will be in sideboards. I don't see this being in the main board, but you definitely want this in your sideboard because if you play against a contender with a lot of accessory hate or just removal in general, this is going to be a card you're going to want. Again, I don't think it goes in the main board. I think it's definitely a sideboard card. Nothing too crazy about that. Um, next one is going to be Weber's Binoculars. This one pays one to attach. When the when you the attached class card attacks, you may pay, engage this card. If you do, uh, show the top three, reveal the top three cards of your deck, uh, or look at the top three cards of your deck, sorry, you may reveal an accessory or class card with an initial resource cost of two or less from among them. Put it into your hand. Put their main cards at the bottom of your deck. So this just allows you to grab your weapons faster. Uh, for anyone that's not aware, Moxie is really all about like attaching your weapons and attaching certain things to be able to play for late game power. A lot of her cards are under rate to start. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to ramp up, ramp up, get buys on, get weapons on the field, and then be able to attach those weapons for free and move them around with Moxie's multiple abilities and then be able to overwhelm your opponent in the late game. So Weber's Binoculars helps you do that. You're, this is definitely going to be an auto-include in every deck. I'd say minimum two minimum probably three um in your deck i would say and something that should be considered as a consistent auto include no matter like what type of moxie you're playing let me lower this a little bit um then the next one we have here is colonel edwards this one is also very interesting so it's a one one three drop which is extremely below rate you do not play this card as to have something on the board long term this is literally to get its effect and then use it as a blocker um you may reveal the top three cards of your deck. If you do, you may put a weapon with an initial resource cost of three or less, which is pretty important, um, from among them into your accessory zone. Then put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this allows you to go get like a Weber's Binoculars, right? Um, it does not allow you to go get something like a power or, or a heavy armor, um, but it will allow you to go get other three costs or less um, weapons or access or weapons which for this one, I believe three or less, you have light power, light, light power armor, and then you have uh, Weber's binoculars are like the main targets you're going to be going to get. You could also get Moxie's sidearm. So it's a way to just ramp up and, again, get those weapons quickly. It all depends on what your game plan is. I definitely think that this is probably a staple. I don't know if this is an auto-include. Um, Maybe in a, just because Moxie's initial kit's a little bit limited, it seems like she's one of the weakers. You might end up putting this as an auto include, maybe a one or a two of. But it being a one one three drop does feel really bad um, because it just depends what you're playing for. If you're really trying to ramp in weapons very quickly, um, then it could be good. I'm honestly going to put it in staple. People might get on me for this that play the game a lot, but this this card's really good. I just don't think it's an auto include. Um, personally, then you have Captain Maxine Riggins. This one's just like, I mean, it's just okay. I'm just going to put it in stable because it's technically not a tech card and it's not a need support card. It's just a two on one drop. Not much to say about that. Um, you have Denver, which is, uh, rogue and, um, alpha hunter cards. Yeah. Get a uh, plus one plus zero. And it has a trigger enter effect that says you may draw two cards, then discard a card. So this just gives a little bit more offensive firepower to your game plan. I definitely think this is good. So I think that it needs a little bit more support for offensive. I'm going to put need support because I think that's where it fits the most. Right now, Moxie, it depends what you're talking about. If you talk about mono color black, like if you're playing mono color black Moxie because that's all you have, then yes, you're going to use Dimber. And I definitely think the lower cost Clash Grounds are better because you don't want to invest a lot of resources into Clash Grounds. However, 
I do think that overall, um, giving your cards plus one plus zero isn't as big in Moxie because she's already going to get pretty good buffs from like Moxie sidearm, light and heavy power armor, things like that. And giving her just one offense isn't going to do a whole lot. You really want to give her defense, which is what other Clash Grounds can do for her kit. So I would say it's a needs more support. There Maybe there's a faster version of Moxie somewhere down the line somehow. Um, but right now, in what Moxie is playing for late game, I don't think this is something you're going to want to do. If it was plus one defense, then I think it'd be more of a stable because you're allowing yourself to cycle by drawing two and discarding a card and giving your cards a little bit more defense. But right now, I think it's just a need support. Then we have Moxie fully loaded. This is like the crazy one. I definitely think this is an auto include. I know it's an eight drop, but it has flight. Um, if you control, um, if you control a certain amount of weapons, it reduces the cost by one. Um, when it enters, you may attach one weapon you control to this car without paying the attached cost. Um, and the resource, yeah, the resource cost to activate traps you control is also reduced by one. So when Moxie's second ability is in play, which allows her to act to attach a weapon for free. You can basically attach two weapons to this card for free in the late game, which is why I think it's an auto include. I think this is definitely a two of like this potentially being able to put this in and attach a heavy power armor and a light armor to it for free is pretty nuts. Um, it's also a little bit subject maybe to removal later on with like Kagan and stuff. Um, but I think it right now in currently what Moxie has available, it's definitely an auto include a two of the heavy power armor. Um, this one's interesting. So I'm going to put this in a weird spot. I'm going to put this as it's, it's a staple for now, uh, for sure. Cause it's just too powerful. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll switch so y'all can see it. It costs three to attach and four to play initially, which is a lot, right? So it's essentially going to cost you seven resources if you don't have a way to attach it for free. Um, but attack attached clash card gets four, four in flight, which is super powerful. So if you play a Moxie fully loaded and you attach this for free, you, you know, you're a Moxie fully loaded. It's coming in what for 10, 11 with flight, which is insanely powerful. Um, but it has a trigger enter deal one damage to your contender. If you control three or more alpha hunter clash cards, this card costs one less to attach. So it only costs two. So it costs six total. If you have, uh, uh, three or more clash cards, but keeping cards on the field with Moxie is a little bit hard. Um, this one can only be attached to Alpha Hunter clash cards, so it's really, really good. It just costs so much, and Moxie right now, like, like I said, you're you're looking at paying what minimum six. So turn six is when this is being played, and essentially you want to attach this. Like it's co it's coming in the same like mana time frame as like Moxie fully loaded or your other like six and seven drops, and I think that. It could just be a little bit clunky resource wise, but it's too powerful not to have in. Um, I just don't think it's an auto include personally. Incoming support, the clash buff, it's auto include. Like, we're not going to talk about those. All the clash buffs in every color are auto includes. Um, Kilimanjaro, this one is a need support. Um, I This kind of card gets me excited. Uh, trigger enter, you may discard any number of cards from your hand. For each card you discard, Target clash card gets negative zero, negative two until end of turn. So I would love to see like some type of like self mill black deck uh, eventually in alpha class. But right now the the rest of Moxie's kit just doesn't go with this anyway. Um, so black's draw power in this game initially is already really, really, really low. Uh, you kind of have to supplement with another color to even get any draw power hardly. Um, so other than the normal one drop that Moxie has. So... Right now, it's a need support card for sure. Then you have Missile Barrage. It's a counter attack. Uh, target attacking clash card gets negative two, negative two until end of turn. Um, if you control one or more, if you control, yeah, one or more weapons, this trap costs two uh, less. So it's really, really good card overall. I think it's definitely a staple. I think it's going to be in most decks. Um, it, it's probably even at the bottom of auto include, to be honest. Um, being able to being able to reduce its cost makes it more playable um, because initially it being a three cost, but it can um, can be less uh, with the right support. Then you have Morak. Um, this one's just trigger enter. You may uh, send target clash ground with an initial resource cost of three or less to the Oblivion. It's very good. 
I think it's more of a tech card. Like if you're playing someone that's really relying on Clash Grounds, maybe you're playing against a Magnate that's trying to give everything flight with New York City. Uh, this is allows you to, you know, uh, or not New York City, that's a four cost. So yeah. So it's something like um, Amazon Rainforest or something like that that you're just trying to get out so Magnate can't keep their, their uh, card uh, draw going. Um, but right now, like it's not like insanely powerful. So I would put it in the tech card category for sure. Uh, then you have uh, Moxie, just a typical four drop. It says this card gets plus one, plus two, as long as one or more weapons are attached to it. I actually like this card a lot because I think it's a staple because it's a four drop three, three that if you attach like a Moxie sidearm to it, it gets the one, one from Moxie sidearm, but also gets the one, two from itself. So if you attach a Moxie sidearm, this essentially gets a two, three. So it goes up to a five, six. It's a four drop five, six, which is super powerful. And it's really easy to do that with Moxie. And then when you start talking about like Clarity's 1911 and white, uh, you know, Moxie's light power armor, which we're about to talk about, like you can really like when you combine it with Moxie's light power armor, which says attacks class card gets two, two in flight. All of a sudden that card's now getting what? Three, four. So it's, it's going for six, seven with flight, um, which is really, really good. So I definitely think it's a staple along with Moxie's light power armor. I honestly think this one's an auto include. This one's a little bit easier to play uh, than heavy power armor. It doesn't have a, you know, a cost reduction requirement. It's just like straight up uh, cost five. Um, and two, two in flights just really, really good. Once you get to the flight in this game, flight's super powerful right now until they come up with ways to defend against it. There is some ways, but very little. Um, and I think that it's going to be an auto include. Um, next one is Moxie Sidearm. I think this is a staple, like a really strong staple. Like if I start ranking these a little bit, right, um, probably goes like this. Just see in here um, like that. But uh, yeah, it, it's a staple. I mean, attached clash card gets 1-1, one, one, which is exactly what Moxie wants to do. Only costs one to attach. Really, really good. It's searchable off Colonel Edwards. Um, it's a weapon, so really nice for that. Uh, just Pretty, pretty solid staple. Then you have Moxie's Preparing for Battle. This one is an auto-include. It's one of the only card draws that Black has indigenously. Um, when it enters, you draw a card. Super, super nice. Definitely have a four of. Nothing much to say about that. Um, then you have Moxie Prime to Clash. Uh, this one's interesting. So it's a 3-3-5 three, three, drop, which is extremely below rate. Uh, you may reduce the resource cost to play this by one for each weapon you control. So two weapons, it's a three cost, which now is not too bad. Um, trigger enter, you may send a target alpha clash card with an initial resource cost of two or less to the Oblivion, and you may only play one Moxie Prime to clash per turn. So super powerful ability if the stars align, right? Potentially, this gets you a one-card advantage because you take out one of their cards for one of your cards, and then... Also, if you have, like, let's say three weapons on the field, this potentially is a two-drop 3-3 three, three that removes a card, which is really, really good. However, if the stars don't align, then it's a really bad card. It's very below rate 5-5 five, five with no extra things to it, and you only can play one of them. So I think from my play, most of the time this comes in at, like, a three cost. Most of time you have, like, two weapons on the field when, you, when this comes up, maybe three. So it's definitely a staple still, but this card can burn you. It can burn you for sure especially that five drop range. Um, so that's just kind of where I'm looking at. Next one, Sergeant Weber, you know, just a normal card. I, I mean, it's really good. Like it really technically doesn't go in any of these. I'm just going to put it in staple because, you know, it's good to search um, off of Moxie uh, um, hunt and ways, you know, to buff it. You can buff it with the weapon and stuff like that. It's just a casual two drop two two. Um, Sharpshooter Moxie, I think, is an auto-include. Um, counterplay, you may activate this trap if Clash card is being played as it has an initial resource cost of two or less. That card's sent to the Oblivion. Really good early game removal. Only costs one to activate. Good Moxie struggles in the early game to stay alive, so this is a way to get rid of their early game threats. They're one in their two drops, um, and it's just an auto-include, I think, uh, until Moxie gets more support. It's just really, really good. I mean, a one-drop two or less removal is, is really premium in this game right now. And I think it needs to be in the deck for sure. Then you have surprise again, auto include in my opinion. Um, it's a counter attack centaur attacking clash card to the oblivion. After this clash, it does not have any stipulations. If they're attacking with an alpha aster or not alpha aster, if they're attacking with like a Kagan or a Lin, a flight Lin, um, this just kills it. So it's super nice for that. 
uh, removal is very important for Moxie to be able to survive to the late game. And I think her two removals in Sharpshear, Moxie, and Surprise are both kind of like you need to have them in the deck right now. Then you have Rizlak the Depraved. This is a need support card. It had, does have Necrotic, which is really nice, which is basically Death Touch, if you're not aware, from Magic, um, where it kills whatever it's fighting unless they have First Strike, um, and they kill you before you can even touch them. Um, but if there are... If three or more Alpha or discarded Clash cards were de defeated this turn, it may reduce um, the resource cost to play this by three. So it'll be a two-drop, five-two. This needs support for sure once like they have more support for the other like classes, like discard and stuff. Um, right now, it's just a really co cool 5-2 or 5-drop that's 5-2 with Necrotic, right? Um, if you can buff its defense, it starts to become really annoying. So it's definitely a good card. I'm not saying don't play it, but what the card is meant to do and the archetype it's meant to run in, we haven't seen yet, right? Like, there's not very much Necrotic in set one. So definitely something we have to keep an eye on as time goes on. Then you have UN Headquarters. Uh, Alpha Hunter Clash cards get 2-0 two, two offense... 2-0 and, and interception which means they can block cards with flight this is super good because like decks like magnate are going to try to fly over you um a lot of you'll notice that a lot of her cards i'm gonna say it's a tech card obviously because it's meant to combat flight um both of moxie's clash grounds are more thematic than useful and i mean that like not in a mean way or not in like a negative way but like moxie and Magnate are the initial clash in their in the whole game, right? In the comic book, in in like the lore, that's what kind of likes like the initial pinnacle clash, right? So, a lot of the cards, not a lot, a, a a couple of the cards are very thematic driven, more so than maybe competitive play driven. That's just my opinion. Um, not to say they're bad cards, but they definitely are all about you know the theme and and stuff like that. Um, and trying to make the most of that lore. So this is definitely a thematic card, right? You're, it's meant to combat Magnate. It's even in the artwork. So, you know, you just kind of got to go with what, what you have there. Um, and, yeah, get right to it. And then the last card we have here um, is Weber Weapons Expert. I like this card a lot. It's a 1-1-2 one, one, drop. Uh, you may attach a weapon. Uh, you may attach a weapon um, in your accessory zone to an alpha Hunter Clash card you control without paying this weapon's attached cost. So when you enter, you basically are allowed to attach a weapon for free. Super nice. It's basically like Moxie's, oh, excuse me, Moxie's second ability. Um, I think that this is a staple because you're going to want to attach, you're going to want to get whatever value you can in Moxie. Again, because a lot of her cards are below rate, I think that you're going to want to be able to, to use it um, as much as you possibly can. So looking into it, um, I'll zoom it up here for y'all a little bit i tried to make this as easy as possible i could have went car by car but i wanted to kind of give you all a holistic picture to be completely honest um but this is kind of what i'm looking at um a lot of her cards are auto include right now because of how her deck works but it, once you start splashing other colors like these could you know come down a little bit or come out um you know i definitely think like if you made me pick like 100 percent never comes out of the deck no matter what um you're right is if i think these right here are the ones that 100% are never come out of the deck no matter what. Uh, Weber's Binoculars, Incoming Support, um, Prime to Clash, Sharpshooter, Moxie, Surprise, and this Weber right here. I think all of those are 100% like the best um, for the buck when it comes to auto-includes. But let me know what you think. Um, I've been playing the game a decent amount. I'm super excited about it. Uh, really ready to kind of get into each color really in depth, do some gameplays for y'all. I'm going to hit up some friends, do try to do some gameplays for the channel, get you, like, people who aren't used to the game, like what the game's all about. Uh, it's super, super fun game. And I'm also going to try to get my local scene into it as well with some learner plays. But, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If you didn't, let me know how it can be better. It's a little bit weird, like, changing gears and playing and talking about another game on the channel. Um it's like a different mental, like, you know, thing you have to kind of get used to. So if I seem a little bit haphazard at the start of these, please give me some grace. Let me get used to talking about the new game uh, in this type of medium, and we'll we'll keep at it. But, yeah, thank you all so much. Hopefully you all have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all.